Hello and good day from my side and a warm welcome to um, the breakout session regarding the marketing program that we did at Trump. Uh, it's called Market to Lead Next and what we aimed at was to increase selling efficiency with automated data-driven marketing. And um, I choose this picture because for, for us, this project was a way how we build different layers of data infrastructure, of applicational infrastructure and of process infrastructure. And as happens to a building, that it can be differ very much from the need of the people who will be using this building. Um, so you first have to start with the need of the people. And you really have to start with the people because you can't build a house without the people living in that and the help of the people constructing and building and furnishing this house. So I think it is a very good picture for the project that we did where we do things for the people with the people and it's quite complex and it's multi-layered. And in the end, you will have an ecosystem with that. And hopefully our clients are happy to live that and to use that in the Trump organization worldwide. So just a few words on my behalf. My name is Katrin. I'm the head of corporate marketing at Trump, and I'm looking back on more than 20 years experience in B2B marketing from both an agency and a corporate perspective. And the main motto that drives me throughout the, the B2B focus that I've been, been working on and with is to make the marketing contribution visible in any organization that, that we are. The organization that I've been for the last 10 years uh, is one of the many hidden champions that we have in the southern part of Germany. It's Trump. And what we do is we produce machine tools for flexible sheet metal processing, but also laser applications for, industri for, for the industry and for science. And the latest business unit and the most rapidly growing one is the laser systems for the semiconductor lithography. So as you can see, it's quite complex what we do. Uh, partly it's rocket science. And also you can see we're summing up to more than 4 billion income. But that Trump is not stopping there. So what we aim at on a corporate level is that we have like three years more to go in order to have 7 billion order intake. And this aim, this very ambitious aim is one of the, the key drivers and um, the internal driver which face and proceed and is the basis for the agenda for change and growth. So on the one hand, I have the internal factors. This is what Trump wants to achieve. And on the other hand, of course, I have external factors. And I think the main driver here is that customer behavior for getting information and for buying behavior has changed fundamentally by the digitalization. So we need to address and to get this order intake in an environment which is more competitive and where the customers and the people has changed dramatically. And the question for me as a responsible for marketing is, is how can we have an addition into contributing these sales goals and these company goals that we have and to do that um, so that we can measure that and we can control it and that we can, can prove that. Starting also with, with the people again, the first people that we need to think of are our customers and the prospect. So if we, they have huge expectations today, not only in the products that has been like that all the time that we've been around and which is facing the 100th anniversary this year, but also they have a very concrete need for content and for an availability of information. And they want to have that instantly and they want to have the right content. And we have to start with their needs and we have to address their needs. And the second dimension, which is really important, is that we have marketing excellence, lead management excellence, sales excellence, so that we have the people with the right expertise and of course the right capacity and the knowledge to use the methodology and to how to contribute on a worldwide level because we can have so much applicational infrastructure as we want. If we do not have the right people that know how to use that and to get the benefit out of that, we could just like skip it and do not build infrastructure at all. The third point is the measurability, which is the key driver, because the one thing is that we want to see, we put a lot of money into the marketing spendings and the invest, and we need to know how does that work? What's the effect of that? And the effect in a B2B environment, that's just one currency and that's euros. And it's how much do we have into the order intake? So we really have to have this measurability to assure that we do put the money and the budget into the right channels with the utmost efficiency so that we are able to get the most out of that, of every money spent or every euro spent for marketing. So that lays the groundwork on a more general level why we do market to lead next on a process level, on a people level, but also on a technology level. And that um, I would be, I will be diving deeper into the technology level just now. We have, when we look at 
marketing and lead management together because for me that's critical that it goes together because it's an end-to-end -end process that we're trying to manage here and to optimize. I have put the two people-oriented points here as well, just for information. But as I said, as this presentation is more about the technological and the data side, I will be talking a bit more about that in the next minutes. So we have, of course, a customer relationship management tool, but we don't have that for the market to lead process. So we don't have kind of a contact or a prospect database to store the information and to have the data getting into context between adding up the tracking, for example, of the customer journey or like steering the customer journey and the marketing campaigns likewise. To what does that lead? That leads to a manual lead handover to sale. So that happens sometimes and um, works quite well. Sometimes it doesn't work at all because that's a very processual thing that we need to, to implement worldwide and we need also the people to do that. And so we have a gap here, which we want to close if we do everything online and uh, on an applicational landscape. The other thing which we do at the moment is that we manually orchestrate multiple marketing channels for a campaign. Um, so we have some guys and um, colleagues in the subsidiaries which can do that and are able to do that and have the time to do that, but others don't. So and if they don't have the time or the knowledge to do that, we're just not doing that. So altogether, there are no automated data-driven customer journeys. There are some in the beginning that we do for our customer platform and the eShop that we have, but not on a larger scale. So and that was what we wanted to, to create and to enable from the perspective of how do we do that and that for us was a very very important thing to know because as i said i'm part of corporate marketing so i'm part of the holding i'm not the one doing the campaigns i'm not the one creating the content that is done by the business units and by the subsidiaries but what we do here in the headquarter at corporate is that we lay the necessary infrastructure so that the business unit and the subsidiaries can work with it and can use it in order to, to roll other campaigns and to do data-driven marketing. And we have the responsibility for the infrastructural part of that, but also for the expertise. So for the people part and for the organizational structure to do that. And so these are always the three things that we are looking on. And we had coming down from the corporate's target regarding our sales goals and our order intake goal also putting that together with the customer behavior change and the question, what can marketing do Tuesday morning, nine o'clock in order to further prosper or to, to support the sales goal? So what we started with are these two action fields that you can see here. The first one is generating marketing qualified leads. And the second one is that we want to contribute measurably and we want to be able to optimize what we do based on data. And these were like having a focus because we can't do anything at one, everything at once. We have something and this was the focus that was given um, from the management to us. And the way how we did that, so the translation from the strategy, the part that marketing can like support this strategy with its marketing business capabilities and how we get from the business capabilities to the process, to a data landscape, to an application landscape. That was where Avaus um, came into the picture and went with us through the entire project. And we used the Avaus methodology in order to do this translation, which is for us a really important thing to do. As I said, as we're corporate, one of the main goals of corporate is standardized processes and therefore be able to automate, digitalize, scale. And that is a thing that we do through the entire end-to-end -end process. And now you will see how we did that for the market to lead process together with the, the colleagues from the Munich office. So the first thing, as I said, is what do we need to do as a marketing Tuesday morning, nine o'clock? So we started with use cases and I'll be showing you the example just later on and then translating and going on further from the use cases, specifying the information that we need in order to do the use case and then translating the information to data. Where does the data come? Where does it have to talk? the one information to the other information? Where does it have to trigger something and an outflow, um, namely into marketing measures and campaigns? And on what applicational landscape does that need to flow and to happen? And that is kind of the, the in a nutshell, coming from the strategy, adding the external factors of the customer behavior and the digitalization, the marketing focused goal, how we can support the corporate strategy of Trump and how we standardize processes create data infrastructure, create applicational infrastructure. 
as I said, use cases is the first thing because that's quite, well, <laughs> it's still a lot of work, but it's something that's really easy for marketing to do. So what do you want to have? So we had a long list and uh, of more than 100 use cases explaining what we do. And we did for the 20 prioritized use cases. We drilled down really deep, as you can see here on the charts. So we, what you can see here, so it's a long list. And here you can see in detail, what's the use case? What do I want to do? What's the benefit? What is the information that I need? What kind of systems do I need in order to get this information from? Or do I want to enter information into? Um, and having that not only in written, but also the process mapped that you can see here and from the process mapping getting down to what kind of information and data from which system do I have to talk with information and data from other system um, and where do I have the uh, the output and the trigger then into into the marketing channels and the visible touch points for our clients so we had over 100 use cases we had 20 prioritized we had five which needed to be there um, from a GDPR perspective and data security so we did this very deep definition of the use cases for 25 use cases. The next step after we defined the use cases was to consolidate all the information of every use case and to put that together. So that is the information, for example, email address. So what kind of information, like what kind of machines does the customer have? What is his email address? Uh, do we have um, any transactional or behavioral data coming, for example, from Google Analytics or for, from an event registration? So what kind of information and data do we have in what use case? And then like just changing the perception and the, the, the look at the data from use case centered to system centered and to cluster the, the information that we need for one system or one dimension. And in the end, what we have, and this is something that I would really like to, to share with you, and um, so I made it a bit bigger here, is the data landscape design. So in this data landscape design, and bear in mind, just 20 plus five use cases, and the very simplest one, because we have a maturity level where we need to start working with the basics. And that already looks like that. So this is really something that you be aware of. It takes time. It needs a clear methodology, and this is a very good thing. You will be able to develop your people too. So the project leads that we have have learned so much. I think sometimes it was also a bit hard way to learn because it is a new methodology and you're not quite sure how to tackle that. So that leads to insecurity. But we had here the right partners at our side with Avaus, and they guided us through this project really well. So I really loved the outcome of that. And not also, I love it. It's also when you show that to other colleagues here, maybe like the website, maybe sales, maybe management, they can see that we dramatically change the way we do marketing here at Trump because they still have sometimes in mind, yes, marketing, they're doing the fairs and the events uh, and the great emotional campaigns. And we still do that, but we add the code and the data and the analytics side to that. And that is still something that we need to, to get to know and to communicate that marketing nowadays is something that you do on a data-driven way and that you can do it very analytically and that you then have to add the emotional part and the, the campaigns. But the campaigns that we do today should be based on the insights that we gain through the, the data that we can assemble. So. Here, the data landscape design that you can see where you have different perspectives. So you have where comes the data from? What about consent? Yeah, where do we get data for the consent? How and whom we can commu um, can contact? Um, a layer where we put the data, they fly, everything flies together, the transactional data and the reference data, and where does the information flow? And where do we trigger output? And I mean visible output for the client in terms of touch point and marketing measures. And how do we make that visible through Power BI via dashboard so you don't have to be the crack for Google Analytics, the marketing hub or whatever in order to gain insights. Then the next one that's not so much rocket science as the last one is what kind of applicational landscape design do we need in order to have this data flowing as we showed or as I showed at the last page. Um, and here you can see what was the outcome that is what is missing. So we are actually um, calculating how much that would be. We're doing the business case for that and are just in the middle of preparing the management okay um, for the implementation of this applicational landscape design. 
in the first implementation phase. So we're not doing everything at once. Uh, so we have a clear rollout and implementation phase one, two, and three, so we can go step by step. While I've been talking a lot about technology and data, there are two more slides which do not talk, but which are just key to the success of data-driven marketing uh, and an end-to-end -end availability to steer the funnel from the very first contact to the order intake. That's relevant, personalized, localized, always on content. So if we do not manage to get the right content in the right order, which is individualized for the persona, and the content is mapped to the need of the persona and leads to our sales guys, all the infrastructure will not help. So the content is one thing that we will also be looking to next year um, because we always we also have to change the way we do campaigns and what kind of contents we create. The other thing is what I call the magic triangle because we need to have excellent in all three of these dimensions. It's the technology which is the gives us the avail availability to automate and to scale. But if we don't have the right organization and the right processes and the standard process beginning with something like a glossar so that we are sure that we speak the right language if we talk with sales or with the IT and that we have the right roles and that we have the right processes. How do we do the things? What's the responsibility of one role? What's the responsibility of the other role? And the key, as I started with, are the people. You have to start with the people. They have to know why are you doing that? What's the reason behind that? What's my personal contribution into the company's targets? And we have to focus on the development of the people into this data-driven different kind of marketing. And uh, I'm very happy to share our journey. Um, the journey is not yet ended. So I think we are just at the start of that. So I'm quite curious what will happen during the next months and years. And thank you for your time um, and your consideration. And I hope you have a really nice day. Thanks a lot. Bye.